This is a series of three videos that will walk you through the commissioning of the Siemens FS230 clamp-on ultrasonic transmitter. Once you land on the main menu screen, select your language. This can be done by using the down arrow to language and then pressing the right arrow key. Then use the up or down arrow to select your language and press the right arrow to lock it in. To return to the main menu, you can press the left arrow. At this point, use the up or down arrow keys to move to quick start and then press the right arrow key that allows you to access the quick start screen. From here, select quick commissioning. Press the right arrow and that will begin the wizard. As in many of the screens, once you make a selection, you're going to see a help screen with text that will give you a description of what the button you just pushed is all about. Once you've reviewed that, then you can press the right arrow key to actually enter and begin configuring the system. Here you will highlight sensor settings, press the right arrow, and then we will move past the help screen and into the sensor settings wizard. When unit settings appear, you're going to select yes. From here, let's change the display units. First, click on the unit length. Now select inches. You can see you have a number of choices here and you can again move up or down to the one that you want to change to, or you can just stay on inches. In this case, hit the right arrow key and confirm the inches selection. Then move down to temperature. You'll see here that the temperature units are already highlighted. If that's the unit of measure you want, then you don't need to go into the screen. However, if you wanted to make a change, these would be the four choices that are available. You would move up and down, make your selection, and then hit the right arrow. This would then take you back to the units of pressure. Now, even though I want PSI, I'm going to go into the units of pressure because I want to show you something that's worth noting. If you've got more than the selections available that are on the screen, you're going to see a bar on the left-hand side. That bar indicates that you can move further up or down beyond what you're seeing on the screen. In this case, we're going to select PSI and then we're going to come back. From here, we're going to see the selected viscosity and in this case, we're going to leave it as set of stokes. As with the other units, you can see the units of measure availability for viscosity. Again, hitting the right key, you'll move back and then you can do the same thing with density. As with the case with pressure, you've got the ability to make the selections over and above what's visible on the screen. I'm going to leave it as pounds per gallon and we're going to go from there. Once you've made all your various selections, and again, you can see what your selections are by highlighting the individual display sections on this screen, you would go all the way down to the bottom. By the way, you could also page up to the top because these screens loop in either direction and then select next to move on. The FS230 transmitter has built-in pipe tables with preloaded pipe sizes, or you can enter your pipe information manually. For this exercise, we're going to enter a custom pipe configuration. In either case, we would select yes in the pipe settings. Here, we're going to move down through the various materials and we're going to select custom. Then hit the right arrow one more time. Once you get in the custom screens, you've got a couple of choices. You could work with either the outer diameter and the wall thickness, or you can work with the circumference and the wall thickness. Now, in most cases, I find that you're going to know the outer diameter of the pipe and the wall thickness versus the circumference. But again, you have the choice of one or the other. We're going to select outer diameter and wall thickness. Now this is a screen type that we haven't seen before, one where you enter an alpha or numeric data. In this case, it's a numeric data field. What you want to do here is to use the left and right arrow keys to move to the number spot that you want to start with. We're going to put in the number of 6.625 inches. As you can see, the units are already there because you selected them previously. Again, move the arrow until you highlight where your number starts and then use the up and down arrows to get the number that you want, in this case 6. And then use the right arrow to move to the next digit and continue adding in the 625 for the fractional part of the measurement. From here, keep going right and when you go right far enough, that will indicate that you consider the entry as OK and you'll be taken to the wall thickness screen. Now we're going to do the same thing with the wall thickness. For this example, the wall thickness we're going to use is 0 0.280. To do this, you would make sure that there's a zero to the left of the decimal point, or move it up and down until you get there. Then put in the 280 to the right of the decimal point, and then click right to OK to move to the material screen. The last thing you want to select while we're doing a custom is the material of the tube itself. 
Again, you can see on the left-hand side that we have multiple choices because you've got that bar there that will tell you that you've got more choices than you have on your screen. In this case, we're going to select carbon steel and we're going to right-click after we highlight it. At this point, the screen you see will give you the outer pipe diameter and wall thickness information when you highlight those individual selections. From here, we're going to move down to the next and then you'll be asked if you need to specify a liner. We're going to pick up with the liner selection in part two of our video series. My name is Jack Rauschy. Hopefully this has been a good educational experience for you. We recommend that you proceed on and view parts two and three of this series for a complete overview of the FS-230 setup.